English. Okay, is Victor ready? Yes. Okay, you can share your slide. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, can you hear me, Doctor? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Raja Anis Nadia, I'm from Radio Shahimi, and I'm from Group 10. And I, today we present uh, the Japanese English or Japanese English. Uh, just on a minute. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. Okay. Uh, so we start off with how the English arrived in Japan. Next slide. So, uh, how did English arrive in Japan? Actually, Japan has uh, its first, co first contact with English even before the Great Meiji era. Actually, in 1603 onwards, Japan has started to participate in the foreign trade uh, with China and Dutch, and uh, which is before the isolation policy. And in 1909 is the year after the arrival of British Royal Navy ship at the harbor in Nagasaki. Uh, so uh, at the time, the the ruler Ido Shogunate or the interpreters were able to speak Dutch uh, to learn English as a matter of national defense. Uh, this was Japan's instruction introduction to learning English. Then in 1848, an American named Renal McDonald. Uh, came ashore in Rishi, Rishiri Island to reject the Japanese policy of isolation. And then uh, 14 translators uh, of Japanese who were proficient in Dutch and were chosen to learn English from him. This McDonald was regarded as the personal uh, English speaker and the teacher of English in Japan. And during the final days of the Ido Shogunate, the first genuine uh, English grammar book was published. And next slide. And then we move on to the next question, which is the factors that uh, caused the arrival of English in Japan. First is the historical factor. As mentioned just now, English uh, was first arrived in Japan before the Meiji era. However, the English influence is more prominent during the Meiji era, which is uh, in 1868 until 1912. Uh, and they call this era as uh, English boom, which is the widespread of English in Japan. And during this era, uh, the Japanese government is no longer under the, under the rule of Ido Shogunate. They made a conscious effort to learn uh, from Western cultures. They also employed foreigners uh, to teach English in Japan. And they also sent Japanese students overseas and give a scholarship to them to support their studies abroad. Their aim is to achieve a level of prestige equal to Western nations and to be as Ito Koku, which is a country of the first rank. And during this period, Japan was known as a modern nation state. Now we will discuss the social factor uh, of the arrival of Japanese English in Japan, which is mostly done through uh, education. As mentioned just now, uh, the J government really put an effort to for Japanese to learn English, and this effort had caused uh, English learning become very popular during that time. And um, due to this, Western uh, language and in uh, particular regular English, which is the English approved by the American in education, was regarded as very important, and a new generation referred to as a uh, generation. Of masters of English was created. However, the Japanese were debating on the use of English in Japan. Some would agree and some would not, uh, which is to keep the identity as identity as Japanese. And due to this, the use of English began to decrease as patriotism keep uh, increasing, increasing until Japan was defeat, defeated in World War II. 
they live in darkness and English begin to head its way into Japan once again. During this period, English is used in high school and trans exam. Uh, they also hire uh, foreigners to teach English uh, language in classroom. And during at this, at first, the the learning is basically memorizing uh, the grammar and vocabulary. But soon they start to introduce a communication based uh, curriculum, which includes oral and listening skills. As for the economy factor. As mentioned, uh, foreign trade has played a big contribution to this uh, start to this uh, Japan, to this arrival of English in Japan, to and it's starting from the translation and interpretation activities. And Ido also had opened up a school to study Western Western document to be used in trade. And government during Meiji also sent diplomat to help nation's economy on how modern industrialized societies work. And of course, uh, Japanese who can communicate in English have better chance in industry. Um, then 1964, Tokyo Olympics happened and Japan also allowed a huge number of Japanese going abroad in 1970s. And they also promote tourism, which create a mixed culture of Japanese and Western. And and lastly is the political factor. Like I said just now, after World War II, Japan was defeated and they live in darkness. So the pro-English uh, Japanese and other English influencers, they use uh, English as a language of peace and democracy and that give light to them and as a part of their bright future. So that's all from me. I pass the presentation to, to Hazwani. Uh, to Aisha Shakira, sorry. All right, thank you very so much. Assalamualaikum and hello again. Can everyone hear my voice? Yes, we can hear. All right. Um, yes. Okay, thank you very so much. Okay. Uh, so let's begin with my presentation, which is on the status of English in Japan. Right, to begin with, uh, according to Tukahara 2002, um, up, there are up to 98% of the population in Japan that has Japanese as their main language. What this means is that Japanese is the de facto official language in Japan. Okay, When we say uh, that the Japanese is a de facto, it means that there is no requirement for any written law that would say or implement Japanese as their main language. Okay, Other than that, you need to know that there are also two additional native languages, which is Ainu and the language of Okinawa. So does this make Japan a country of uh, monolingual? No. Because they also celebrate, uh, you know, other foreign languages such as Korean, Chinese, Portuguese, Philippines, Spanish, English, Thai, Vietnamese, and Indonesia. So by then, we know that English stands as a foreign languages, although not mostly spoken in Japan. Okay, interestingly, um. Tukahara said that uh, the proposal to legislate English as an official language has been made twice. The first one was um, more than a century ago by, um, by the statement, uh, sorry, states, uh, statesman named Ari Norimori. And the second time was in 2000, led by a former Prime Minister, Keize Obuchi. All right. Um, why did this man propose such, um, uh, such, uh, you know, uh, such, yeah, such proposal? Sorry. Okay. This is because they 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 believe that English is seen as an opportunity language, which means it it should helps with the social economics of its people because some of the country, uh, the role of English is different. For example, in Philippines. Uh, it is believed that English plays a role as uh, as an em imperialist language. Okay, right. Um, you okay? Just now, my uh, member mentioned about when they start, uh, you know, introducing English in Japan. So 
uh, in learning English was established in school after World War II with only emphasis on reading skill. Okay, we do know that um, Japan is the epitome of globalization. It's the idyllic utopia of all um, advancement. It's a paradise for technologies and robotic invention. And the people, they take pride of their country's, um, their country's achievement. And they don't shy away from foreign uh, investment, just like my um, groupmate just mentioned. Um, and this also means that they constant, uh, they constantly, they certainly love to travel or over the world. However, in reality, um, their achievement in English, based, uh, you know, according to Education First English Proficiency Index, the English level of Japanese is ranked thirty. For, uh, so, sorry, 35th out of 72 countries. Mind you that Singapore at that time um, ranked at the 6th place, Malaysia 12th, Philippines 13, India 22nd, and South Korea 29. And to make things worse, um, two years later, Margolis stated that Japan dropped to the 53rd place. Why does this happen? It is similar to what my member, uh, group member just uh, presented. Uh, simple reason would be because of the wrong teaching method. Uh, and their learning is mostly based on the examination. And whenever there is little to none practice, they tend to have a very low proficiency in that language. All right. However, I would do no justice if I do not show you this video clip because somehow this interview shows you a different perspective towards how um, or what is the status of English in Japan. Okay, it will be a very short uh, video. My apology, is the voice clear? It's my apology to everyone. It's a... It's breaking. Oh, all right. I don't know what, what's going on. Um, maybe um, try, just try again. Maybe you just switch off this video and then maybe just try again. Just on it again. Okay. I'm very friendly. Well, um, did right. you guys... Okay, basically the content of the interview, uh, oops, sorry. The content of the interview is about um, how does the tourists from, you know, from uh, Australia, from Russia, from uh, America perceive the Japanese people English, okay? Um, as a tourist, they need helps from the local people to you know direct them to these places or to help them with um with everything um and the the host yes the interviewers was asking about how do they think um on this uh how, how does the tourist think on this matter most of the tourists says that uh the the local people can speak english but um, it is only uh, on the phrasal, phrasal level. So perhaps if you go to Japan, you can see the local, um, the local Japanese uh, speak English, but on the phrasal level, as in yes, no, uh, up, down, um, yeah, uh, and and so on. There is no complete uh, sentences. Um, when they speak in English. All right, moving on. Now we will look at how is Jap Japanese English, or as we call it, Japanglish, different from Standard English. When it comes to uh, the distinction of Japanglish and Standard English, um, the main factors from the main factors comes from the linguistic features of the official language. Okay. <coughs> 
So we need to know that Japanese belong to a different family language to standard English. This is similar to uh, the previous group of, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Konglish uh, presented, whereby they they uh, stated that English belongs to the Indo-European language group and Japanese belongs in the Japanic language family. Okay. If you had the chance to listen to how Japanese uh, would pronounce any English words, you should be able to recognize the distinction and the distinction caused by their three main scripts in the writing system. Here, here we have hiragana, katakana, and kanji. Okay. Uh, to make things clear, you need to know that kanji is a character of Chinese origin. Um, and hiragana and katakana is the Japanese alphabet, okay? Um, and in modern Japanese, they also use the Latin script called romaji. This is the one that helped us, the non-Japanese, uh, to read the subtitles uh, and their characters in general. Okay, what is the difference between hiragana and katakana? Hiragana is the most commonly used standard form of Japanese writing. It's used on its own or con uh, in conjunction with kanji. So, whenever you want to dis uh, distinguish uh, Chinese language and Japanese language, you need to identify whether there is hiragana in that sentence. If there's no hiragana, that's a Chinese language. Okay. Hiragana is the first form of Japanese writing that children read, uh, sorry, children learn. So most children's book and even some video games like Pokemon um, would most likely use hiragana. So hiragana can be said uh, as similar to English cursive. It is used because it is easier to read and it is the standard way to write for clarity and understanding. For katakana, uh, it, it is more like print in its appearance, more blockish and sharp. It is used to signal the reader that a word is a foreign uh, and most likely used to emphasize and uh, onom onomatopoeia. So imagine whenever you write an English um, essay and you have to, you know, you have to include uh, a term that does not include in the English language, you would usually use, uh, you would usually, you know, idealize the language to show that this is a language that belongs to my culture but not English. So that is, you know, how the concept works. Now, when we talk about the phonology of um, Japanglish or Japanese first, um, Japanese has five pure vowel, like the one we see here, uh, five pure vowel sounds that may be short or long. The syllable structure is simple, generally with the vowel sound preceded by one of the approximately uh, 15 consonant sound. So because of that, it is uh, safe to assume that this is the reason why Japanese English pronunciation is rather unique and the reason why they have a hard time to uh, learn English. Now, um, in in you know Japanese uh, language, there are a few complex consonant sound combinations. Sorry, for Japanese, okay, um, there are a few complex consonant sound combination in the English words such as strength and Christmas. As a result of this difference, Japanese find English hard to pronounce. Uh, hence, they often sh uh, insert short vowel between the consonant, for example, st, rank, uh, and most likely when this happens, they have uh, difficulty to correctly perceive the, the word that they hear. Okay, the second problem is that they have a specific problem with, with English vowel sound, um, in the diphthong, diphthong words such as caught and coat, you know, they, they have a hard time to differentiate that. Or bought and boat. Okay, or, you know, even the minimal uh, pairs such as hat and hut. 
Okay. Uh, other minim, uh, other noticeable problem uh, would pertain English consonant uh, on the L, the L and the R sound. So any words that is, uh, for example, lot, rot, glimmer are impossible for the Japanese to pronounce correctly. And lastly, um, Japanese also struggle with the TH consonant sounds such as the word month, 13th, and closes. Um, this is also include the V sound uh, because most likely similar to Konglish, they would pronounce berry instead of very and ban instead of van. Moving on to the vocabulary of the uh, Japanese English. Um, the Japanese uh, the Japanese language consists of three um, three sources, which is the Japanese itself, the Chinese, and last but not least, the English. Um, but then when we want to focus on the English, we can say that there is a large number of English words that are used in Japanese language. And this is good because it may help some of the learners with their acquisitions of English language. Um, the English loan words are usually not too close, yet not too far from the normal pronunciation of English words. For example, uh, that you can see here, um, is orange juice, which is orange juice, and computer, computer, which is computer. Um, we have another examples that we managed to list down with the help of a YouTuber named Doris Pitt. Uh, the first half, uh, the uh, first off, we have examples, uh, you know, from from a food base. For example, when a standard English would pronounce McDonald's, the Japanese English would pronounce it Makudo ra, sorry, Makudo Narudo. Very complicated, but this is what they find easy. So, uh, another example, whenever the standard English pronounce KFC or the Kentucky Fried Chicken, the Japanese English would pronounce it as Kentucky Fried Chicken or in short, Kentucky. Very different, but it is easy for them. Uh, and then we also have Pizza Hut, as in Pizza hut And Yogurt, as in yogurt Very similar to Konglish, but it's uniquely Japanglish. Next, we have the example from automobile brand. Um, when it comes to other countries' brands, such as the BMW and Volkswagen, the Jap Japanese would do... Um, would add a short uh, vowels to pronounce the brand, such as BMW. It becomes BMW and Volkswagen, Bolkuswagen. But for their own brand, as in Subaru, they have no problem to pronounce it. So they pronounce it as Subaru as well. Now, moving on to the sentence structure. This is the main factor that I find um, why... It, it, uh, learning English becomes difficult. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so, Japanese tense and voice are conveyed through changes in the verb form similar to English. But, when it comes to the auxiliary, Japanese does not have this, uh, these linguistic features. Okay, other than that, um, Japanese verbs do not change for person or numbers. Therefore, we can observe the omission of the suffix S in the simple present tense third person. For example, she go, my father work. There is no she goes or my father works. Therefore, when this happens, they, they struggle to choose the correct tense to convey the intended meaning. They tend to mix up between the future, present, and past tense. This is because it is how they do it in their own language. For example, um, when we translate it from uh, Japan, it would be, I help you after school. Similar to Malay, we don't have 
suffixes in our verb because we already have uh, the 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 term telah or sudah and etc. All right. Now this is more to the um, okay. Sorry, this is more to the syntax uh, part where we can see that Japanese use SOV subject object verb and English use subject verb object. As you can see in this picture, the f um, sorry, yeah, the the picture on the top. You can see um, Naomi as in the name of a person, Taro uh, also a name of a, of a person, and Computa uh, an object, and the last one is Ageta, which is the verb. So um, in the description, as long as the verb is at the end of the sentence, um, the 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 whole sentence is considered as correct. It doesn't matter whether you want to uh, to mention Naomi first or Taro first or computer first, as long as the verb is at the end, it is considered correct. Uh, all right. Um, in Japanese, they have this thing called uh, case markers. For example, ga, o, ni. Okay, these case markers makes it possible for the words in Japanese to appear in different orders and retain the same meaning. <clears throat> in this sentence, we have been looking at... Um, in this sentence, we've been looking at this one, Naomi, Taro, Computa, Ageta, or Naomi, Computa, Taro, Ageta. Um, it is possible to place the object where the the subject normally occurs and the subject in the normal object position because at the end of the day it does not matter and the, the meaning does not change but when we do this in English um, it is considered as a sin because the meaning would uh, differ so differently okay all in all the Japanese language allow um, a multitude of syntax the only thing that needs to be fixed is the verb. And last but not least, in Japanese language, they also have a social style of speech, which, which um, mostly talks about being polite and, um, you know, yes, being polite and use the honorific markers. Um, so, in a formal setting, Whenever you speak to a stranger or a person, you need to use uh, the higher politeness and uh, the proper honorific markers. And informal, you have to use, uh, you can use or you can, you know, disregard the politeness and uh, as well as the honorific uh, markers. We can see this in English language as well, but it is not as extensive as uh, Japanese language. Uh, I think this that is all for me. I pass the floor to the next presenter. Assalamualaikum. Uh, can you hear my voice? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, my name is Umi Shahinda. Uh, so I will be presenting on the fifth and sixth question. So the fifth question is how do Japanese feel about in their country? Uh, actually, uh, my groupmates uh, already mentioned some of the points, but uh, there are some additional points to be made. Uh, so uh, English uh, develop a positive connection in Japanese culture. Uh, English is the representative of non-Japanese languages. Uh, according to the CIA factbook, uh, Japan is an ethnically uh, homogeneous nation with 98.5 of 98.5% of Japan's large population being ethnically Japanese, followed by Korean uh, by 0.5% and also Chinese 0.4%. And foreigners are not talk uh, of Americans, European or Africans, but as re but rather as Kukukuji, uh, means other country people. So it is like uh, Japanese and others. Uh, so uh, English um, represents internalization in all its aspects rather than just a language. Uh, for example, 
currently in elementary school, uh, English is not taught in English class, but uh, in foreign language activity class. Uh, so there is little need uh, for Japanese to use uh, English in their country, despite massive public investment in English, in English education, uh, because English is not present in most domains in Japan, except for the small non-Japanese English speaking community. Uh, next slide. Okay. Uh, the teaching of English in Japan has expanded uh, over recent years, despite a questionable success rate to improve the Japanese people's English communication ability. And according to the Commission of the Development of Foreign Language Proficiency 2011 plus 3, foreign, language, foreign languages activities were newly introduced in elementary schools, while the number of English classes in junior high schools was increased by about 30%. As for the near high schools uh, was increased by uh, uh, was sorry, sorry was increased by eh sorry 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 uh, according to the commission on the development of foreign language proficiency 2011 page 3 foreign languages activities were newly introduced in elementary schools while the number of english classes in junior high schools was increased by about 30 percent as for senior high school classes conducted in english and other innovations were introduced uh, yeah, despite this growth, uh, studies estimate that less than 30% of Japanese uh, can speak English and uh, less than 8% of them can speak English uh, fluently. Uh, and uh, it is because many students are reluctant to speak English for being afraid of making uh, mistakes. So they go with what can be called as Japanese road and focus on avoiding the, the embarrassment that comes along with making a mistake. So we move to the uh, next question. How has English impacted the life of Japanese people and how is English used by, uh, by them? So uh, Japanese people use katana words for foreign language. And as mentioned by uh, Aisha just now, uh, katana is uh, the syllabic writing in Japanese for words uh, for foreign, uh, from foreign origin. And they put a, a unique Japanese twist uh, in it. So uh, there has been an increase in English uh, words in Japan. Uh, particularly as, the, as new technologies are introduced. Uh, many of the words have been transformed into uniquely Japanese ones uh, that can be uh, nearly incomprehensible to the native English speakers. Uh, so uh, some examples of this wasi-igo. Wasi-igo is the English words coined in Japan. Uh, include pasokan, means a personal computer. This is uh, or, uh, uh, can relate with uh, what Aisha presented just now. Uh, therapy means television. Omurice means... Uh, Omelette, opuru means apple, and patoka means patoka. Um, so, uh, likewise, uh, English also has been influenced by Japan with Japanese words such as karaoke incorporated into English. Uh, so, karaoke, karaoke was derived from two words, kara and oke. Kara from karapo means uh, empty or void, and uh, oke is from orchestra. So, I will pass to Hazwani to continue with the presentation. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear my voice? Yes, can hear. Okay. Um, yes. My name is Tamantani Mohamed Fami Anwar. Um, okay, so for my part is, will this variety of English gain prominence over local languages in Japan or the surrounding regions? So basically, um, Japan English is very prominent as uh, in Japan as a design of element, especially in advertising uh, product as marketing strategy. This is to uh, attract people to buy their product. For example, uh, there was once a tour, an English tourist, uh, he came to Japan and he spotted an art phrase uh, on the sign of a butcher's shop in Kyoto. And then um, the sign uh, showed that meat shop, uh, no, no, the, the sign showed that uh, flesh shop instead of using uh, meat shop. And then uh, the tourist told the shop staff that it was an English language area. But um, then the, the, the owner of the shop uh, doesn't doesn't care about the mistakes, and they just nodded politely at him, uh, because um, in in their culture, I mean in Japan, English, uh, I mean like it didn't matter if the sign said flesh or fresh or meat, because it was just there to catch people's attention. It was be it, it wasn't being used to communicate, uh, as people could see it was a meat shop from outside, but rather it was uh, a mode. And then uh, it was particular to Japanese culture where meanings are not explicit but inferred. And of course, there is often no attempt to try to get uh, English right. 
nor do the vast majority of the Japanese population ever attempt to uh, read English design element in question. So uh, for, for the next part. Okay, next slide. Okay, okay, so what are the future of English in Japan? Basically, Japanese think uh, acquiring English is not a uh, significance. Therefore, the rate of English proficiency will remain stated. Uh, Japan's Ministry of Education acknowledged that in a survey of 2019 about uh, Asian country with English proficiency, Japan has dropped to 53rd uh, place in global English proficiency. proficiency. Japan ranks near the bottom of Asian and developed countries alike despite constant reshuffling and refinement of the English educational curriculum in schools and the frequent assertions that English language skills are needed to compete in this uh, modern economy. Japanese, uh, but this is because Japanese are caught between a belief that they want uh, to, I mean, they want to prioritize the importance of the Japanese language and culture uh, and the need to exist in, and they also uh, think that there is the need to exist in a globalized world in which English carries economic privileges and status associations. Okay, so um, apart from that, uh, the difficulty of learning and teaching English during pandemic is distorting students' interest in English. Um, students complain it was difficult to, for them to understand the learning process through online lessons. Uh, I mean, um, there was a program, an English program company in Japan uh, called Ikaiwas. Ikaiwas, uh, it provides uncontented quality of services for both students and employees during this pandemic. So um, many teachers also from, from the company complain that uh, particularly uh, this is found to be a huge challenge for them as their companies have been using traditional method only uh, for teaching school for so long and this sudden transition created more work and stress for the teachers. And a Kaiwa employee also revealed that the technology or rather attitudes toward it was a big challenge. The company was rather ill-equipped to switch to remote lessons. So uh, the future of English in Japan might remain static due to these two issues. First, the persistence of the Japanese to retain the language on the basis of culture and identity. And then uh, English in Japan will also remain static because uh, this pandemic, because we do not know how long uh, this pandemic will last. So that's so from me. All right, <clears throat> good 12, good 10, sorry. Uh, okay, are there any questions uh, for group 10? Uh, just now, um, Somebody mentioned about the schools and the introduction of uh, English in schools. Um, do you know what kind of activities or innovations are being uh, introduced in schools for students to learn English? Wait, does it work? Hello? Yes. yes. Um, all right. So basically, their curriculum is not so, too far from the one that we have in Malaysia. But they do emphasize on the, they put emphasize on the um, grammatical lesson. Because, because they, uh, uh, what do we call that? They, um, they want a perfection. They, they put a very high stress on these students to really use the correct um, grammar and yeah and everything. Mm, okay, I think they want to produce. Uh, they want students to produce accurate sentences, right, without any uh, grammatical errors. 
things like that. Okay, so uh, you mentioned just now about the uh, Japanese characters. Um, so if let's say when we go to Japan, when we see signboards, uh, so what is it actually? So that would be um, katakana or hiragana or what, what kind of uh, alphabet are we looking at? If let's say we look um, the signboards. As for the signboards, um, I think they would usually use hiragana. Hiragana. Mm -mm. Because mm -hmm. you can find hiragana more than katakana. Mm. Alright, okay. Anyone else with any question? So, um, uh, somebody also mentioned with the decrease in the um, use of uh, English language. Um, so, any plans to maybe increase? Um, because, okay, decrease because of maybe a sense of patriotism among the Japanese. They want to maintain their own language and culture. But... Um, are there any efforts being made by maybe like the maybe Ministry of Education or maybe certain um, sectors of the government where they are trying to maybe um, increase people's awareness or you know increase in learning? Any effort being made by any quarters of the Japanese people to increase their proficiency? In one of the uh, articles that I read, I'm not sure if, if it's from Margulis or um, a different article, um, mm -hmm. the author said, the writer said that um, the ministry is pushing the Japanese to use the internet more. So mm -hmm. for them to connect with the outside world more in order for them to um, practice their English. Because... Apparently, in the um, in the community, they tend to really assert politeness, and culture really plays a big role on their language as well as uh, gender. A uh, gender, yes. Mm. Okay. And what about the program just now? E E K I W A S. What um, what does the program actually offer? Basically, um, the program uh, provides an uh, English teacher for schools uh, and the teacher usually comes from different countries. Oh, so that means it's a um, teacher actually um, going to school. It's not some program on TV. It, uh, I think it's for the schools. It's not a program on TV. But there's okay. also that uh, statement said that uh, AKI was also run on radio radio station like for for the english lesson okay do you know any programs um you know like uh, okay over here you know we have um, oh my english um do you know any programs over there uh something similar to oh my english or some some you know um learning english programs on tv or radio or you know for learners, regardless of age. Any idea whether they have that? Um, they don't have programs similar to Oh My English, but, mm. uh, you know, Japanese, they have a lot of uh, game show. And um, before this, we, as a group, we did found this one uh, YouTube channel that posted a video of one of the game show and actually i'm trying to open it right now uh so uh, give me one minute and i'll i'll try to show it mm -hmm. in this okay. yeah okay while aisha is um 
searching for the video and trying to share. Maybe, you know, the other group members, you know, um, can this answer video. this. It's pretty good, right? Um, the foreign languages well, in um, Japan, there are a lot. Uh, just now you mentioned um, one of them is uh, Bahasa Indonesia. Um, why, why do you think, you know, a lot of these foreign languages, um, they are not um, people with, uh, the, the speakers are not that many, but yet, you know, um, it's being used, uh, being mentioned. Um, why do you think there are a lot of uh, foreign languages over there, such as Bahasa Indonesia? Um, this is... Uh the foreign languages exist in Japan because of the uh, foreign, uh, sorry, the immigrants, those mm -hmm. who come to work or, uh, you know, maybe marriage uh, and sort. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, I have the video ready. Okay. So I shall present the slide, uh, the video. Video. Can you hear the video? Um, I, I, I can't hear. Oh, wait. <laughs> How do I stop? I can't stop. What is this? Um, I cannot stop presenting. Can you see the video? I can see it. Can you hear the, the sound? Can I hear? We cannot hear the sound. Saya 
Um, I think you can try to present by tab. Okay. Um, okay, so basically, this is uh, a game show where the host asks the participant, the girls, to pronounce girl, G-I-R-L. But the Google Translate detect their pronunciation as God, except mm. for the last girl. She, she managed to pronounce girl uh, correctly. Mm. Okay, all right. I mean, that's a good um, um, app for learning pronunciation. Okay. All right. Was I sure? Yes, yes, okay. Sir. Sorry. Yeah. Anything else that you want to add regarding the game show just now? Um, or any other any other in the group that you would like to add to the game show? Uh, no, Doctor. Uh actually the the, the last the last girl who managed to pronounce the correct uh, uh, correct pronunciation of girl is uh, she has uh, English blood and she's oh. not uh, pure uh, Japanese that's why she can speak uh, English okay. correctly actually okay oh. so she has an English blog ah uh, yes she, she shares on how to learn English Mm. Okay, uh, what was the, the last one? Uh, the no, doctor. What Anis meant was that the last girl who managed to pronounce girl correctly mm. is a mixed child. Okay. Yeah, so she's not pure uh, yeah. Japanese. Oh, she's not pure Japanese. Oh, okay, okay. Ah, right. Okay, okay. Anyone else would like to add uh, to uh, group dance uh, presentation? Anything regarding Japanese English? Mm, there is one notable mention about uh, or regarding why uh, English is uh, or English proficiency is quite low in Japan. Basically, mm. um, uh, research shows that for Japanese to learn English, they requires two thousand and seven hundred uh, ta- uh, sorry two thousand and seven hundred plus hours. Considering mm. the fact that um, the Japanese belongs in a different group uh, than English. But here's the thing. In the school, they learn English uh, from the primary to the secondary. 
less than 1,000 hours. But then the expectation of the government is really, really high. Mm. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, the yeah, okay. The hours are low, but the expectation is high and, yeah, not enough exposure for the students to learn English. Okay, yeah, that explains why the, um, the population cannot speak English um, well compared to maybe like other countries. Uh, and then on top of that, they also have um, very strong, um, you know, like culture. patriotism uh, feeling towards uh, their own uh, language and culture. All right. Okay. Anything else that uh, you would like to add or does anyone have any other questions of, uh, for group 10 regarding Japanese English? Okay, if there is no question, then thank you, Group 10. That was a very good presentation and um, a very good um, share of knowledge uh, regarding Japanese English uh, with the class. Okay. All right, class. Uh, so I think we have uh, maybe finished all our presentations, right? We don't have any more outstanding group um, uh, to present. Uh, so everybody has presented and um, so we only have two more classes, right? Tuesday and Thursday. So I think Thursday next week will be your um, exam, right? Um, a test or something like that, right? Your assessment, yeah? Um, so maybe on Tuesday, I will get more uh, information regarding your assessment on Thursday. Uh, so I can share with you a bit more. Yeah. All right. So any other questions? Okay. If there is no question, then I will end the class here. So once again, thank you, Group 10. Um, it was a good presentation.